Solange Mujan is with me on set to take a look at the papers today. Hi, Solange. Hi. Uh, lots of focus again on this fifth day of this massive strike here in France. Yeah, and with the continued uh, transportation shutdowns, meetings between the president and unions, more major protests planned, and the upcoming details that are going to come out on Wednesday about the retirement reforms. Le Figaro says the coming days will be a moment of truth for the French president. And they're vocally, they're actually vocally behind the reforms. The conservative daily says the government, quote, must stand firm against, quote, an army of protesters and push through what the paper says is an ambitious plan. But not all of the French papers are uh, behind these reforms. The left-leaning Libération also says this upcoming week will be a vital one for the French president. But the paper reminds its readers of the widespread support all across France against the pension reforms. For Libération, the stakes are high, not just for the survival of France's retirement system, but also for Macron's legacy as well. In an editorial, the paper says that Macron, if Macron caves to the union's demands to suspend the reforms, Reforms, then he would essentially be shutting the door on his own presidency or his vow of changing France. So Liberation says, quote, it's double or nothing time for Macron. Now, the protests and the strikes are a big story here in France. Not the only story, though. Emmanuel Macron also today is hosting talks in Paris between Vladimir Putin and Volodymyr Zelensky over the war in Ukraine. Yeah, the summit between Angela Merkel, Emmanuel Macron, and the presidents of, uh, of Russia and Ukraine is being praised today in both the Russian and the Ukrainian press. Let's start with Commerçant, the Russian paper. It calls the, the, the talks the most anticipated event of the year. It expresses much optimism, reminding us that the terms of peace were already agreed to in Minsk and that it's just the order of how to roll out these terms that's being debated. Now, the Ukrainian press, there's also a degree of optimism. The paper Golos puts the emphasis on its coverage of the behind-the-scenes coordination that's going on between Zelensky and Macron as they try to get Russia to agree to Ukraine's desired rollout of local elections in the Donbass, prison exchanges, ceasefires, and troop deployment. But getting peace Getting to peace may not be that easy, the paper says. In their cartoon today, Golos has a king like Putin lying in bed with essentially his fingers in all of the pies of the major issues revolving around the war in Ukraine. How is this, uh, how are the peace talks being covered by the international press? Well, Le Monde says, quote, finding a way uh, out from a dead end a dead end doesn't necessarily mean you end up at your destination. So a little bit of philosophizing there from Le Monde. It essentially says that even if there are talks now, after three years of not much, uh, peace is not necessarily around the corner. The paper says that getting eastern Ukraine truly back under the control of Kiev is still a far way off. For foreign policy, the American magazine, what's at play here is for, uh, for, 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 for what is play, at play for Russia isn't about annexing parts of Ukraine. They argue that Russia wants influence, that through securing legal autonomy for the Donbass, uh, the region would vote along Russian lines and provide a veto power in Kiev, one that could be used to stop Ukraine's rapprochement with Russia. All right, let's focus now on the situation in Hong Kong, where the massive protests there Sunday were front page news in mainland China. Yeah, but instead of focusing on the some 800,000 people that came out to protest uh, and the peacefulness of the mostly peacefulness of those protests, uh, the Beijing backed China Daily focuses instead on the fire and arson attacks outside Hong Kong courthouses. Nevertheless, for the South China Morning Post, the local Hong Kong site, the political message is that the six month anniversary protest, uh, the message there is clear that the people are resilient and that they will not back down. Solange, there's an analysis piece today in The Washington Post about just how the Hong Kong protest movement might end. Yeah, this is a very interesting opinion piece. It compares all of the protests that, or most of the protests that have occurred over the last year around the world with those of 2011 and 1989. And it says that the, quote, spectacular results of the Arab Spring or the downing of communist regimes in Eastern Europe in 89 haven't happened as much this year. While disappointing, there could be a good side of this, according to Jackson Deal. He says the fact that leaders of authoritarian regimes don't want to be blamed for bloody crackdowns, like that of Tiananmen Square, for example, um, 
show that political change has a chance now. That, for example, in Hong Kong, uh, Xi Jinping's reluctance to crush the movement through troops means that, according to the Post, Beijing may make more concessions in the coming future if the, move, the protest movement keeps going. So, on something completely different yes. now, the Guardian newspaper has an article about how to plant trees, and apparently we've all been doing it wrong. Yes, I indeed. Uh, I generally stay away from sort of how-to articles, but this one sort of blew my mind because uh, we are all doing it wrong. The Guardian tells us uh, that a new study has come out that had found that if you plant a tree in the ground, you should not dig, dig a round hole, but a square one. That round holes in the ground essentially do what a pot does, uh, or make the roots go round and round, and so they could be sort of Squished. round hold bound, <laughs> uh, and that by, by digging a square uh, a hole, the roots will go for those angles and spread out, and your tree will thrive. Who knew? Yeah. That's a good piece of information. All right, thriving in a very adverse and, and horrific circumstances this time was the subject of an article, a fascinating article, in the New York Times this weekend. Yeah, I love this story, and I had to talk about it today. It, it touched my heart. Um, it's about two Jewish prisoners in Auschwitz who fell in love uh, during their time in the concentration camp. And that love actually helped them survive. And they vowed to meet after the war and marry, but that never ever sort of came true. But they did meet 72 years later, and the young man asked his former beloved if she had helped save, save him. She had a higher position in the camps and could doctor documents. And she actually told him that she did save him five times by changing up paperwork. Um, so a beautiful love story about resilience mm. and, and, and surviving through hard times there in the New York Times. Thank you, Solange. It's always nice to end on something like that. Thanks so much. Solange Muzan there with uh, today's press review. Don't forget, if you want a closer look or to find out more, you can always check out our website, the address France24.com.